This shocking proof of evidence will makes you question reality. The Great Pyramid Mystery and Their True Purpose Finally Discovered Mainstream historians will tell you that the Great Pyramid of Giza was a glorified tomb for the Egyptian pharaohs, the only monument left to the original seven wonders of the world. This structure was created with impeccable mathematical precision and is a unique, mysterious feat of construction and engineering. There's only one problem. The Great Pyramid has none of the characteristics of tombs, including extravagant artifacts, ornate, well-sealed entrances, elaborate coffins, or even mummies themselves. It was, however, built with unique materials, the same materials that are used today for electrical conductivity. These facts are leading more and more historians to believe. The pyramids may have had a far more useful purpose. The Pyramid of Giza was not at all a tomb, but a power plant generating and transmitting electricity to the civilization surrounding it. The question is, why do you think the reason behind government doesn't want us to know the real purpose of the pyramid and the free wireless energy? Almost similar situation happened why didn't Nikola Tesla receive enough support from the government even though he offered his invention free wireless technology to transfer free energy? Coincident? Join the mystery code for a closer look. You are watching Mystery Code. To start, it's important to comprehend the tremendous effort that went into creating these monuments. The pyramids of Giza are among no less than 118 of these structures in Egypt alone. And that doesn't even include those pyramids in other parts of the world. Given our current understanding of how early civilizations built their monuments, it would have taken no less than 20 years to build these so-called tombs, and that's if no less than 20,000 workers worked daily. To this day, historians still can't prove exactly how or when they were built. This leads us to What resting place for the dead could possibly be so important that it would warrant the such phenomenal effort, time, and precise engineering? Even without knowing that they have nothing in common with regular tombs, you only need to stand before them to realize that's a lot of work for a cadaver, natural. Naturally, we make conclusions based on the assumption that ancient civilizations were more primitive than us. But what if intellectual evolution isn't always linear? Can advanced technology be lost and rediscovered centuries later? Is it possible that an ancient culture had knowledge of and used electrical power to know for sure? Let's look at another case where the technology of power generation appears to have been used, and then forgotten. We know Edison and Tesla brought electricity into common use moving into the 20th century. Yet in Iraq in 1934, three artifacts were found together, a ceramic pot, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron, which when combined with liquid acid, can be used to create chemical reactions that produce an electrical charge. Known as the Baghdad or Parthane battery. These materials date back 2000 years, 10 years after their discovery. Someone using grape juice with similar materials successfully generated a few volts of electricity. This process has since been demonstrated on the Discovery Channel's program Mythbusters, where lemon juice activated the electrochemical reaction between the copper and the iron producing 4 volts of electricity. Nowadays, you can simply search online to find instructions on how to create your own battery using these chemical principles. But historians have long assumed that thousands of years ago, there was no knowledge of this technology and that this archaeological find is a mere coincidence, even though we've long marveled over artifacts with intricate gold plating, which requires electricity to be created quite simply. Energy generation happens as a result of simple chemical properties and can be done by anyone with four basic materials. So here are some important facts about the structure and the materials of the pyramid. For starters, it contains angled tunnels that lead not only into the pyramid but deep underground to areas claimed still to be unexplored. What tomb needs a shaft directed into the earth? We also know that centuries ago there were enormous swivel doors that weighed no less than 20 tons, but miraculously, it was so well engineered, they could be moved to enter with a push of a hand. 
Since no Egyptian tomb has ever been found to be deliberately accessible, what was their interest in continuing to visit the mummies? Or could such a door have served a purpose? Perhaps containing and insulating the space inside, though you'd almost never know it. The Great Pyramids of Giza were once covered in white polished limestone referred to as casing stones. The cuts made in this reflective stone were angled perfectly, so it would have a smooth, flat appearance. This would have made the giant structures brightly reflect the light of the sun like a mirror. It also would have made perfect insulation inside the structure. A large earthquake in 1303 disrupted the casing stones and they were removed to use on other structures. Today, all it remains is the inner core of the pyramid. The image of the incredible amount of light that would have reflected from the monument raises curiosity, as does the reason for the insulation was there a desire to draw attention to their dead? To keep mummies warm or cool, or perhaps something else. Next, the material dolmite was used on the inner surfaces. Dolmite is known to increase electrical conductivity directly relative to the amount of pressure on it. High pressure creates more electrical current. Next lining. The passageways and underground tunnels of the pyramids are granite, which is slightly radioactive. Granite contains high amounts of quartz crystal with metal, and it's a well-known conductor of piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity occurs as a result of stress or pressure on the quartz, as demonstrated by the wristwatches, which can be charged simply by rapidly shaking them. This granite actually ionizes the air inside the creating a chemical reaction, which again increases the conductivity of electricity. When such electrons are given the chance to bypass sections of rock via metal wire, quite large currents can flow. Another important material used to construct them is the mysterious mortar, half a million tons, which holds the giant stones in place. Though it's been analyzed many times, modern technology has yet to exactly recreate this gypsum, which comes from sediment. This gypsum can withstand tremendous pressure and astoundingly is even stronger than the stones themselves. Clearly, it's contributed to keeping the monument intact for thousands of years. Could there be another reason why they used a material that could withstand such high pressure? So limestone, dolomite, and granite, supposedly constructed for a tomb are in fact analogous to the exact materials we use to make electrical wires. They also share a relationship with pressure, which increases their electrical conduct. Just northwest of the Great Pyramid is Sarah Pam here. There are 20 huge granite boxes each weighing 100 tons. Classic Egyptologists say these are coffins, yet the granite here came from 500 miles away and each box is so large and so that there's no possible way it could fit through the existing tunnels and entrances. These supposed sarcophagi were therefore somehow built into the structure with such precision they're within 10,000 of an inch of being perfectly flat. In the meantime, any electrical engineer will explain that a container serving as an energy capacitor or battery must be made entirely of the same substance. So there's no interruption in the magnetic field. Could these boxes be just that? If so, there's a centuries-old granite sarcophagus on display in an Egyptian museum that's thought to be unfinished. Unlike those in the pyramids, this one's cracked. Suggesting that perhaps it wasn't unfinished, but simply abandoned because the crack which occurred would have interrupted the magnetic field, permitting it from successfully serving its purpose. So there is clear evidence to support the possibility of electrical use. Since these supposed sarcophagi are clearly way too large for a human being, the accepted theory is that they were, yes, believe these bull coffins for the pharaoh's prized bulls makes you wonder who came up with the bull coffin theory to add to the mystery. In 1993, a mysterious and inaccessible room was discovered after remaining hidden for thousands of years, appearing to have deliberately been concealed by the structure's engineers. The room came to be called the Queen's Chamber and was finally explored in 2011 with a small remote camera to reveal a long-last mummy. Hardly it contained, carefully crafted copper wire and more important. There were instructions painted as symbols onto the floor, which appeared to show a clear wiring diagram. 
Look at any battery from those used in large power plants to the smallest pellet batteries in wristwatches, and you'll see that they require a metal such as copper to create the chemical reaction, known as potential difference. You can run an electric current through copper. And the coil will produce a short-range magnetic field at a second coil, and the power is transferred from one coil to the other. A windowless room with copper wirings could create a higher potential on one wall, which transfers energy to the lower potential. On the other wall, consequentially releasing electromagnetic energy into the confined space of the so-called Queen's Chamber. Sad. These wires have since disappeared entirely. And mainstream Egyptologists claim. There's no functionality whatsoever to this room, as they also claim there's no functionality of anything in this structure beyond the ways it serves as a tomb. A good place to note, however, is that the foremost Egyptologist Zahihos were indicted for theft of Egyptian antiquities. The question is, why do you think the reason behind government doesn't want us to know the real purpose of the pyramid and the free wireless energy? Almost similar situation happened why didn't Nikola Tesla receive enough support from the government even though he offered his invention free wireless technology to transfer free energy. The government confiscated Tesla's assets shortly after Tesla's death, but no one knows much about what was confiscated. Nikola Tesla was one of the most brilliant inventors in history, but his work with free energy often put him at odds with the government and other powerful interests. After Tesla's death, the government quickly moved to confiscate all of his assets including his free energy machines. But what happened to those machines? And why did the government want them so badly? No one knows for sure, but there are a few theories. Some people believe that the government was afraid of Tesla's technology because it threatened the traditional energy industry. Others think that the government was worried about how Tesla's technology could be used in warfare, or that they were afraid of what he might reveal about secret government projects. Whatever the reason, the confiscation of Tesla's assets remains a mystery to this day. The implications for this understanding of electrical power by an ancient culture are huge. It would rewrite history as we know it. Do you think that free energy could be transmitted wirelessly around the world? And whether or not you do believe that, do you think that if it really could do that, we would actually know about it? Thank you for watching, let's all find out more shocking proof in part 2 of this video, which you can access by clicking on the link in the description below.